few nights where uh, <clears throat> we didn't pitch so good. You know, I think it's it's a it's a rare time for us to give up uh, seven earned runs. Because I know we didn't make any errors tonight. So that's uh, <clears throat> you know when I saw that their team is hitting 254 as an average, I have to give their hitters credit because uh, um, you know in my two-year tenure here, I've not I've not seen this park give up this many runs in two consecutive days. You know, yesterday. 10-7 is 17, and today 13. 30 runs in two days. That's a that's a first for a, okay, for a park that's known for uh, you know low run scoring and pitching. So, yeah, you know, I credit their hitters. And in, uh, in fairness to Badamo, uh, who stringed a groin, he missed a start, and I think that his control suffered as a result of that. Um, you know, physically he was fine, but he left a lot of pitches up in the zone where they they jumped on. And obviously the biggest hit of the ball game was when uh, uh, Garcia, their guy, with, uh, with two strikes against uh, Blank with the bases loaded, uh, the double down the line. You know, baseball is a game of inches. It could have very easily been hit at Thompson and been an inning ending double play and we're up 4-3 and as it, as it was it turned into a three run inning and we never caught up from there. But I was uh, I was proud of our guys in the last inning. Although you know we didn't do it with the bats, uh, Alexander got a little wild and walked a couple people. And uh, the wild pitch, we got two runs on the board and got within one. And with uh, you know with Thompson and Deal at the plate, it's encouraging when at least getting the tie and run to the plate. You know we felt like we were still in it. So we'll just have to come back and go after him tomorrow. And, and thank God that the league is all parity because. Uh, you know, here we are right at 500 or a game below, and we're still right in the thick of things. So, you know, we'll just keep battling. And uh, I think it's encouraging that this is the third or fourth game in a row that our hitters are showing signs of having better at bats and, and getting more hits and uh, more opportunities to score. So that's it. That's what I got. And whatever questions you guys have. Badal mode struck out Garcia twice. Did you think about leaving him in for that? Event? No, the the plan because he's coming off an injury, uh, and I left it up to Dave, or because Dave's been monitoring his health, and Dave told me the plan was five innings or 75 pitches, and um, the thing that caused us to change that because he gave us five, but the fifth inning was the best of the five that he had pitched. Um, he had a one. It was his only one, two, three inning. And it was so clean, and he said he felt good that Dave said, you know, let's let him go back out for the sixth, which I was 100% for, um, especially in lieu of the way the fifth went. But in the sixth, when he walked the leadoff hitter in a one-run game on five pitches all up and then elevated the ball to the next two guys, although the balls weren't hit hard, that's what happens when pitchers get tired. They elevate their pitches, and two Although they were soft line drives, they were line drive base hits, they weren't round balls. So that made it, a, it was too bad because he had struck out each of the next two hitters twice, but tired and getting his pitches up, we weren't going to wait till the horse was out of the barn. And like I say, Blank came in and made some good pitches. I mean, he had Gar he had Garcia one and two, and uh, you know, to Garcia's credit, he stayed on a slider and hooked it inside the line at third, and that's the ball game. What are your thoughts on the way that Vinny's been able to come along this season? He was able to go opposite field tonight and then move the other two runners over tonight. Yeah, Vin, Vinny is, you know, Vinny had a terrific first month in pro ball. I mean, he hit 340. He hit 400 for, I think, the first three weeks. And then he went through his first prolonged slump in pro ball um, and slowly saw that average drop as low into the, I believe, 287 is where it bottomed out. And now he's starting to show signs of what he did early in the season, which is his pitch selection has been much better until the last at bat tonight, and he's using the whole field. And so I'm nice. I'm glad to see him back up over 300. He's, he's done a nice job for us both ways. What effect did the groin injury have on Madamo, especially that he hasn't pitched in about a week since that injury? Little... Yeah. Well, I, I, like I said, I think, I think what it affected was his stamina. You know, I think... Um, in hindsight, it's too bad that the fifth was so clean because if, if it had been like any of the others, like I said, the game plan was for him to go five. We were shorthanded on pitching again tonight, but but we piggybacked Blank with him because Blank started five days ago in Badamo's place. 
and so we had him fresh. The plan was for them to go five and four, or four and five. But, you know, once again, Badamo's fifth inning was a one-two. It was the best inning that he threw, and when he told Dave that he felt great, I think that was more with his heart rather than, I mean, obviously the way he went pitching the sixth, he was out of gas, but he didn't express that, and we didn't see it until, unfortunately, the runners were on the bases. So, you know, obviously the sixth inning was the key part of the game, and, and uh, I, I got to give Garcia credit because Blank threw a good pitch, and uh, a pitch that he struck out twice on, on, uh, on Badamo, which was breaking balls, and, you know, he doubled. So I give the credit to him, and, and Blank competed very well. He kept us in the ball game. Unfortunately, that was the big hit that, that was the turning point. But after that, Blank kept us in the game, and it is what it is. You seem to have a rotation Thank with you. you seem to have a rotation with your catchers. How important is that for you to see them all doing pretty well and um, being able to call aggressively behind the plate? Well, we're trying to we're trying to match up. You know, with three of them, the organization want all three of them to play. It's hard to develop you know, three catchers at one time because they're. None of them are going to play as much as they want to, but some of them seem to work. Uh, Hilario and El Monte have worked terrific together since extended spring training, and that's continued all season long. So that make that's an easy pairing, and um, you know the other ones we've kind of mixed and matched, but uh, you know with with uh, uh, you know Garcia has done a good job. Uh, with, with Badamo, like I said, t today today it's just unfortunate that Bad Bad Badamo's who's got very good control today he didn't have it. Now, you know, a fan may look at the thing here and say, well, walk wise, well, how many did he walk today? See, he only walked uh, where is Badamo's one? One. See, he only walked one, but we look at it the game within the game. For us, he was wild within the strike zone, which means. Badamo's effective when he throws pitches from the thighs to the knees, and he threw too many strikes today that were belt high, and one of them went over the wall, and a couple of them went off it, and that's just that's not him. And that, but that's the product of not pitching in eight days. And when you look at this lineup, so many guys on multi-hit games. Acevedo started off uh -huh. with a triple. You went Garcia with the two doubles today. Mm -hmm. Cole Langford's been a tough out all year long, and then of course Oliveira with the home run. How much of that was just the hitters just being well, so effective said, for State College? Yeah, no, that's, that's what I give their hitters credit. And, you know, you, you look and see their team average is 254, we're 222. You know, we're giving up I mean, 30 points, and God knows how many runs they've scored more than us on the season. But yet, in the standings, we're right there with them in the wild card slot. So, you know, we're competing because our pitching keeps us in the games. And fortunately, in the last third of the season, we're seeing signs that the hitters are coming out of this funk that they've been in all season long, and that's encouraging to us. And you mentioned about Game of Inches, Zach Matthew and David Thompson hitting those fly balls right to the track. That could have really changed yeah, things, especially but, but neither one. Neither one was hit good. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the wind was blowing out today, and, uh, and they were both. I think I think Zach was way out in front of his. I, I knew even with the wind blowing out, that wasn't going to scrape the wall. And Thompson's, I could see, he caught it off the end of the bat. It was a good swing, mm -hmm. but it, it, the timing was off a little bit, and he caught it off the end of the bat. So, um, But Thompson did hit one real good line drive that was caught at the wall that he just didn't elevate. That was a good good, good ball. And he also reached base today a couple yep. of times, hit by a pitch, yep. walk. We were shocked to see him get a walk. We were <laughs> absolutely... It, uh, we couldn't remember, nobody in the dugout could remember the last time David Thompson got a base on balls. And, and we say that kiddingly because he's a first year guy and he's gotten, last night he struck himself out four times. The pitchers didn't strike, he swung at pitches that nobody could hit. And for whatever reason, he refuses to take walks. He, he wants to swing at everything and his average is showing him that that's just not possible. You know, I think he's going to be a fine player once he gets his feet on the ground and learns his strike zone. But that was a start tonight. You know, him taking a walk was it was a shock. So, you know, we got Cantalone going tomorrow, and uh, like I said, we're seeing positive signs with our offense. You know, I mean, uh, normally four runs is enough for us to win a game because you know, we usually get just one or two. Is it been strange you were 15 and two and scoring four or more, and now two losses in a row? 
Is that big odd? Like now that the last well, it's, it's odd for our pitching to give up seven mm -hmm. runs. But like, like Gershon said, a lot of that I credit. I credit their hitters and Badamo's layoff from being on the mound. His, his, I don't care if he didn't walk anybody tonight. His control was poor by his standards. Mm -hmm. He is, and that's what hitters are supposed to do with. Them. You look at the leadoff triple. What was the count? Three and two, where he had to throw it right down the pipe, mm -hmm. and the guy lead the triple, and they're on the board. You know that guy doesn't get that pitch if the count's not three and two. And Badamo's not a guy that goes deep in the count. You know the only one of our starters that goes deep in the count is Church because he doesn't have good control, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he's the only pitcher on our staff that's given up more hits than innings pitched, which is a result of that. What kind of pressure does that put on an offense that for a while has been struggling when you do fall behind like that and just you know, have to basically come back every single inning. It yeah. seemed like it was like a season. But, but at least, but at least now the guys have belief that mm -hmm. we are going to come. When we, if you'd have seen our last road trip, a game like this, we were we were out. If the, the dugout was totally because we knew we knew we were overwhelmed with the runs. But because we got seven yesterday and we got two early today from the, uh, Zavala's bases loaded base hit, th there was a feeling in the dugout that hey, I mean there was a, we we everybody felt that we were in this game. You know, and, and, and went from 7-4 to 7-6, and we had two home run hitters, uh, you know, up at the end where one swing could have tied it. So, no, I'm seeing a lot of encouraging things. And uh, as good as our pitching is, this is bizarre for us to give up this many runs. And, you know, can alone will, you know, give us a good effort tomorrow. And, you know, we're getting closer to getting the pitching back, you know, get back in sync. Um, you know, Paul Schiff was not available today, but he will be tomorrow. You know, and Magliosi would have closed today. Now he's got an extra day of rest. So sometimes when you lose a battle, it ends up helping you in the long run because getting through with just two pitchers tonight, th that gave the bullpen a much-needed day of rest so that when they are used, they figure it would be more effective.